Yes, I can hear you. Yes. Uh, what was the question? So I was asking, what is the uh, what is the diamond problem in in Java? Time out. Diamond problem. Time out. I am not. So, so what will happen if two uh, if one class is uh, extending two classes, or is that even possible? Uh, it it is it is not uh, possible in Java. We cannot extend uh, one or uh, uh, sorry more than one classes in Java. Uh, it it will uh, cause some uh, conflicts like from which class if. If the uh, same method exists in both the classes, and if you override, and uh, it will be confused, like uh, which method, which from which class it needs to take. So multiple inheritance is not allowed in Java. That's why we go for an interfaces. We can extend multiple interfaces, but we cannot extend uh, uh, classes. Okay. So in collection, you have array, uh, array list, link list. Okay. Okay. So when to use array list and when to use the link list? Okay, array list when when we need to keep track of the sequential order like uh, uh, with the first element. If I need to know the where the second element is, then we can go for a link list because link list will show, store one, uh, the value of the first element and also the reference of the second element. So in that case, when we need to keep track of the uh, order of the uh, list, we can go for a link list. If not, if there is no any relationship between uh, the first element and the second element in the list, then then we can go for an array list. Okay. So, what is the use of hash code and equals method? I mean, uh, why we overwrite it? What is the contract between these? So, uh, like equals method is like uh, uh, it um, two string. Okay. If I want to convert my object into a string, then we go for a two string. Then then we need to override our two string no, method. No, uh, so similarly, like sorry, hmm? uh, I ask about hash code and equals. Hash code and equals. Yeah. Uh, hash code and equals. I I don't have any idea on that. Okay. Okay, no problem. So, what is a deadlock? Deadlock, uh, it it is in a life cycle of a thread, like uh, where the thread uh, uh, is. Uh, at some point, the thread will be deadlocked. Uh, there, there will be one condition uh, for the deadlock state, like. The, um. It will be in thread, but I just forget the condition. Like when it will be on deadlock. Okay, okay, no problem. So whenever, like, uh, uh, you have two resources and two threads, and uh, uh, there is a situation where one thread is acquiring a lock on on one resource, and the second uh, thread is acquiring lock on second thread. And they are both not releasing those resources, so mm -hmm. that time deadlock will occur. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fine. Um. So, are you comfortable with uh, threads and concurrency? Threads and concurrency. No. Okay. Fine. No, not on concurrency. Okay, uh, that's fine. So, why string is immutable? Um, we cannot change that. Uh, it is a why it is immutable. Yeah. Uh, the strings uh, for the memory. Uh, uh, the location of our strings will be on the uh, string pool, not on the heap memory. So, uh, inside a, a string pool, they, uh, we cannot able to change the values of a string again and again. Uh, like, if a string is declared one time, uh, if the uh, like the object will be created in the string pool, and if some 
if some we cannot able to override that particular uh, uh, values later the, uh, because it is immutable but i uh, i'm not sure like why it is uh, uh, made immutable okay so what is the difference between equals method and double equals operator okay so uh, double equals will be able to compare the values uh, uh, stored in the string and equals method will be able to com uh, compare the uh, memory locations to store uh, to which it is to sorry i was uh, so double equals operator uh, double equals will compare the uh, memory locations okay. and it, it will compare the uh, uh, reference like address which it is stored and equals method will compare the value of the uh, strings that is stored in uh, each value. so double e uh, equals uh, doesn't compare the value it also compares but on, when it compares to uh, when it comes to string it will always uh, point to the reference it will not compare the values so even uh, if if both have same reference only it will return to true okay so uh, can you write a single try block and multiple catch blocks in your code okay multiple catch blocks with a single try block is that possible Yes, yes, it is possible. We can catch multiple uh, exce exceptions. So, what are the things you need to take care if you are if you are uh, trying this? Uh, like first, uh, as you uh, as already mentioned, like uh, if the hierarchy needs to be followed, like uh, uh, first uh, the uh, if we need to catch the subclass uh, exception, then later at the last we need to catch the main exception. Like uh, last catch blocks will be having the uh, superclass, like. Uh, like exception exception is the super class of all the exceptions so we need to catch the exception last so file not found and arithmetic error exception arithmetic exception so these will be handled first last uh, uh, the hierarchy needs to be followed in that manner okay okay fine so uh, why we use string builder so as strings are uh, immutable we cannot able to um, do manipulations in strings so for that purpose we are going for a string builder and string buffer so these the in, with this we can able to uh, perform manipulations uh, like operations in strings so that's why we are going for okay so do you know anything about reflection in java reflection yeah no so uh, is java passed by value or passed by reference and uh, yeah tell me it is yeah java is passed by value and what do you mean by passed by value uh, passed by uh, uh, like we do, we don't uh, use a uh, pass by refer reference means like uh, uh, using the memory locations we don't have a concept of pointers in java so c c++ will be uh, for pass by reference pass by values like uh, uh, we need to pass the values to uh, for the method calling we need will be passing only the values will, will not be performing operations with the uh, references like memory locations or addresses like that okay so what is static Hmm? Static. Uh, can you spell it? Static. Static. Key. Static. Key word, okay. Yeah. So, uh, if if you make our class static, we we we, we there is no need to create an object for it. Uh, like uh, we can directly call using the class name. If you make a, a class name to be static, we can directly call. Uh, we, there is no need to create an object. We can directly call the method inside the class. in the class name itself so like uh, we cannot able to uh, override a uh, static method so those are okay okay so in which scenario you will get uh, exception like uh, error index out of bound if you try to iterate over an uh, array uh, like if uh, for example if i say my array is of size 5 if i 
if uh, in my for loop if i do an R, uh, uh, i plus plus and it goes beyond 5 then in that case it will be throwing array index out of bound exception like if you are trying to access a, a more than the uh, size of an array then uh, that exception will occur okay so what is the use of uh, marker interface marker interface yeah no idea okay do you have experience in any framework yes yeah, spring boot uh, and angular okay spring boot and angular angular okay so in spring boot uh what is dependency injection in spring boot or in spring in general like uh, a dependency injection like uh, we need to in, uh, inject our dependencies uh, to our project in, uh, by using constructors like uh, we can inject our dependencies in the constructor itself um, so when when the class loaded the the required dependencies will be loaded as a part of our constructors So, okay, so uh, is there only only method uh, by using constructors? No, uh, there are many annotations. We can use annotations also, and we can um, uh, import that dependencies uh, into our projects. We can also give auto wired in some cases. Okay. So, what do you understand by a beam? um bean is like uh, when when uh, when an object is created for a particular uh, class like when the class is instantiated a particular bean will be created in the uh, uh, java memory uh, so that that will be easy uh, so for if starting every application there will be uh, it will be creating a bean for each and every uh, class which is already available in our uh, project Okay. Ha have you tried any test cases as well in your project? Yes, we use uh, uh, JNet uh, for writing test cases. Okay. And what are the different uh, scope of beans in in Spring? Scope of bean. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have any idea. Okay, no problem. Okay, so I think I have done from my side. Do you have any questions for me? Um, I I don't have any questions. Like, uh, I just want to know, like, what are the areas I need to look upon, and 